If you're not already watching this video, then watch this video right now. Hi, my name's Flossie Rocks, and I live in this 1999 Ford E350 step van, my tiny home on wheels. I'm driving all the way out here because I'm about to go for a swim. Imagine yourself on a deserted island, but not a tropical one, up in the Pacific Northwest. Would you know how to survive? Would you be able to identify the creatures around you? You have some tools, some survival gear, a wetsuit. What around here is edible? Would you make it out alive? Oh, they're so slimy. Which are the bits that are gonna crisp up like calamari? I remembered when I went to bite it in half that you said it was like calamari. So then I just put the whole thing in my mouth. Yeah. At its simplest, this is why I live in a van. All right, we are moving on to check out another spot, leaving the lake and heading to the beach. It'll be interesting to see if it is windy and if we can use our vans as shelter from the wind. But I have directions loaded up back onto the dirt road. Where is she assume? I'm driving all the way out here because I'm about to go for a swim and there's no gate on this breakwater, I guess is what it really is, breakwater wall and it will mean that my vehicle is a little closer to the ocean so that when I get in and out I can stay warm. I feel like I'm racing the tide a little bit, but it'll be worth it and I'm going to really enjoy being in the ocean. I'm a bit tired, so we're just going to make do and make the best of what we've got. Freediving, the art of exploring underwater without an oxygen tank, using only the oxygen one can hold in one's lungs, lowering one's heart rate as much as possible, feeling into a relaxation, meditation headspace, holding one's breath and diving to the depths as far as one feels comfortable. Each 10 feet, another atmospheric layer of pressure on top. From very, very floaty and buoyant, the weight belt helps 
get me underneath the surface. Sinking down, 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet, and sometimes further. Below the surface lies a host of other creatures, another world, different plants, different beings. To me, this feels like this other planet, this other magical universe, which I sometimes get to visit. The more and longer I can hold my breath, the longer I can visit, like a magic spell, where one wrong move and the spell is broken and I have to return to the surface. I get a limited amount of time to visit and see as much as I can and bring my memories, these videos, these little snippets to the surface with me to show you. Plumos anemones, the giant Plumos anemone, can live to be very old. To me, they look kind of like an underwater palm tree. Sometimes they live even up to a hundred years. These anemones can be some of the world's tallest polyps. When threatened, an anemone can contract, shrinking and hiding the oral disc. A hooded nudibranch is easily recognizable by its uniquely large, tentacle-fringed oral hood. Nudibranch uses its flexible hood to capture prey, such as zooplankton, jellyfish, and even small fish. Here, you can see the hooded nudibranchs and their egg ribbons, and also a little frosted white and orange nudibranch. Nudibranchs can also swim by flexing its body back and forth. Nudibranchs are often found on rocks, eelgrass, kelp, and in the low intertidal and subtidal up to 37 meters deep. They extend this freakishly large head in front of them and around ambushing prey, the slug version of a sneak attack. The little Dumbo ears are actually called rhinophores and they are what the nudibranch uses to smell. Did you know a group of hooded nudibranchs is called a bouquet? There you have it. A sea slug that looks like a cross between a dinosaur, a jellyfish, and did you know it also smells like candy? They produce a watermelon-like scent. It's no coincidence that they smell like fruit. They use a diversity of smells to attract their prey. Giant plumose anemone primarily eat plankton and other microorganisms. They use their tentacles to reach out, grab their prey, and bring it towards their oral disc where they consume it. The moon snail, named after somebody called Lewis, don't know who he is, is one of the largest and most common moon snail species found on the BC central coast, measuring up to 14 centimeters or larger across. Giant plumose anemone reproduces asexually. In the Puget Sound along Vancouver Island in British Columbia, it's common to find them on docks, pilings, rocks like these ones, sandy structures, man-made structures, underwater. snails lay an egg casing or a sand collar as a round curvature of the animal's shell where the eggs are laid. The casing is made up of sand and eggs held together with a jelly-like substance with the eggs sandwiched between the sand layers and they are laid between April and September and will stay in the collar until they hatch six weeks later. The moon snail is pretty unique in the fact that it drills a characteristic beveled edged hole through the shell of its prey using a radula. You'll often find clamshells washed up on the beach with these signature round holes in them. 
If you ever see these sand casings or egg collars on the beach, remember these are not trash. Educate others around you. Sometimes they get picked up and thrown away, people thinking that they are tire or trash. No, these are the eggs of the moon snail. Apparently moon snails are also edible. I have not yet tried one, though I have found several recipes on the internet. I plan to give this a go sometime in the future when I have the time and space. I'll do some more research in the meantime to find the best method of preparation and the time and season that is recommended. This time instead I happened upon an abundance of sea cucumbers. Much like earthworms on land, sea cucumbers move slowly across the sea floor, scooping up organic matter, breaking it down and expelling it so that bacteria can continue the decomposition process. This skill has earned the sea cucumber the humble name of vacuum cleaner of the sea. They breathe through their anus, but breathing. Only harvesting from a place where I can see that there is a plenty and healthy population to support what remains. Sea cucumbers take a large amount of preparation, but are actually a delicate tasty treat that tastes and is of the similar consistency to calamari. They require some preparation, cleaning out the insides, which I'd prefer to do in the ocean so that I don't end up with their innards all over my wetsuit or bag or van. Whew. I am just out of the water and it is a little squally, little rain showery, perfect moment to get out. And I'm pretty excited because I finally found a place that is quite exciting with life. Like I've seen places way more amazing and I never cease to appreciate what's right in front of me. Um, I've been noticing that a lot of the places that are vehicle accessible are often in the mouths of estuaries and rivers, which makes sense. We've got mountains here and a lot of low-lying land, so there's a lot of fresh water intersecting with ocean water. But here I saw an enormous amount of sea snails and sea cucumbers and varying types of little and medium-sized crabs, which is really cool. And so with the abundance of sea cucumbers, I was like, okay, this is the perfect opportunity to take a couple. I forgot three, I actually picked up four, but I must've dropped one along the way. Um, and try making what I would name as sea cucumber calamari. It's the kind of, feels like the closest thing I can describe it to. So I have it, I have it. I need to finish getting changed or just move, move everything over to camp where Amanda is and then get changed. Actually, I might do that. It might be easier. Um, and um, then I have to prep the sea cucumber because they're, they are not a one-stop shop necessarily for eating. There is some pre preparation required and I'm quite excited about it. It should be uh, an interesting experiment. I've seen several um, outdoor chefs and people who are freedivers and ocean lovers who also like to harvest their protein sustainably from the ocean, eat sea cucumbers. I've had it once before myself and it was really delicious. Um, so I'm excited to do it again, try it more often. Yeah. It feels really important to me to know that there is an abundance of a thing in an area before I even take any. And this was the case, and I've been waiting for this moment. So it feels really special to have maybe hustled a little bit to get here and get in on the low tide, even though it's late evening. And I may or may not get in tomorrow, like tomorrow's low tide I think is 6.40, close to seven o'clock. 7 p.m. so maybe we'll see hey look it's a rainbow it's a very pretty rainbow too purple purple blue green yellow orange red is it purple or indigo i don't know anyway <sighs> Time to get warm. I 
just got into my parking spot and it is gorgeous and I'm excited and we're gonna have a fire and look at the view. I mean, my windows are filthy, but I'm pretty thrilled. I will show you more later. I have turned my heater on and I'm gonna also light my fire because I wanna get warm as fast as possible and dry and I'm currently only wearing half of my, I'm still wearing half of my wetsuit. So I need to get that off of me and hang up to dry and get my core inner temperature warmed up. You can see my flushed face. <sighs> and then tonight we will have sea cucumber, S fried sea cucumber, like deep fried calamari, and it will be delicious. I gotta get warm. <sighs> Okay, here we have our pieces. That is the amount that you get from three sea cucumbers, and I chose the biggest ones. These things look three times the size when they're under the water, and I want to show you that this was my first attempt. And these two I have gotten progressively cleaner and less wastage. I'm very happy about that. I'm going to take these outside. <clears throat> you can actually cook all of this and fry it. I've never done that before and I want to read more about it before I do that. This I know how to do. Just, that was lucky. I have gotten rid of the outside casings of the sea cucumbers. I have removed the inner ligaments, which are the bits that are gonna crisp up like calamari. Next, I wanna get out an egg and some panko crumbs and some oil, and then we're gonna heat up our fry pan really hot and hopefully do a little fry up and it's gonna be a mwah, mwah, mwah. Olive oil, panko, looks like chicken now. It's got that like whitey pink color. I'm gonna put this in here. Wonder if we need to flour it? Egg, flour and panko? Or just egg and panko? I think we'll try a little flour too. Sea cucumber, panko, egg, flour, plate to put it on. This is some food left over from lunch. We have some rice and I'm going to put some limes and lime juice on top of it. So let's give this a go, let's get started. I have got the fan on so it's a little noisier in here because I'm trying to keep the humidity down in here, but I'm gonna start getting frying up now. Let's give this a go. I think it goes flour. Give it a coating of flour, coat it in egg, coat it in panko. Okay, maybe we turn that up a little bit. Oh yeah. All right, let's quickly see if we can get all of this done. Better I got at it, the pieces got bigger. Okie dokie, so we're done. It looks pretty freaking delicious. Some lime juice. Covered it in salt. 
And I'm gonna go and take this over to Amanda's van and see if she likes it. She probably hasn't tried sea cucumber before. Not many people have. I hope she likes it. I come bearing food for food. Okay, so we have uh, sea cucumber battered in egg and flour and panko crumbs. And it is salted and there is lime juice. Okay. I'll try it with without. Tell me what you think. It's kind of like a calamari. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed making this <laughs> and it takes a lot of work to prepare but this is three sea cucumbers so it doesn't actually produce a whole lot of food. I remembered when I went to bite in half that you said it was like calamari so then I just put the whole thing in my mouth. <laughs> yeah you can choose a smaller piece if you want. With the lime juice. Yeah. It looks like cauliflower. Yeah. With the batter. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's good both ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all three. That's all, this is all three plus one more piece in the fry pan. Yeah. Mm. That's not what I would expect it to be like. Is it, this is like a whole cucumber? No, they're individual tendons from within inside of it. And you scrape them off the inside of the, the middle of it. <clears throat> You take off all the skin. You take, yeah, you put, you scrape this outside of, out of the skin. I'll just watch your video. I'm yeah. Sure you explained it. <laughs> but if you want. If you're not already watching this video, then watch this video right now. If you want. <laughs> the, the daily limit for sea cucumber is 12. Okay. So we could go back tomorrow. I can bring a few more. Because mm -hmm. I would really like to put some of this in my freezer. It's a lot of work to prep, but I have some time at the minute. Sometimes I have time. Mm, get it while you can. Uh, everywhere. Mm. Not the last few places you went in the water. Too much estuary, but yeah. And then the rest is just mm, batter. Crumbs. <laughs> yeah. Pinko crumbs. Mm. I'm freaking like half this. don't have many days left now before I leave. Had some amazing adventures and opportunities. say that these two are a pair because there's a male and a female oh they're right by the van it's just pretty oh, puddles. puddles can be beautiful too it looks like butt cheeks <laughs> Oh, 
Silly little walk for my silly mental health. There must have been another bridge over there too. So I don't think that was a bridge site though. Modular bridge. That's so funny. So pretty. Pardon? Elderflower. Oh yeah. Sorry, I can't hear you with all the crinkly noises of this hood. Oh yes, because it's grown over and look how beautiful and mossy it is now. It's a little wonderland. Okay, as long as we don't come across any bears. <laughs> Yeah. Outer flowers living on the edge. I am excited to come and paddle over here because it looks like this is a straight down wall or the water is so clear and beautiful looking and rocky and there's this beautiful bay. Hopefully Amanda and I can paddle over here. Check it out. Yeah, I'd be into trying to paddle to see where the river comes in. Yeah. Back in here. Do you think we would take, I think we probably for this distance take two vessels. Yes. And then just. No, we're taking two vessels. Tie you, mine to yours when I jump in the water. Yeah. Great. Because I am not going to. You don't want to come back and pick I'm me up. I'm not going to paddle you on my board when you're getting on and off. No. Okay, I have a new theory. I think this is an old weir. I mean, look how gorgeous this is. See, look, concrete wall, some sort of thing into the river, and then these slots. Freaking beautiful. And it is still raining. I'm hoping the raining rain stops. I want to go for a paddle and a dive again further around the coast. Thanks so much for joining me on this wonderful episode where I had an absolute blast diving, observing all of these beautiful marine creatures and preparing and eating sea cucumber. Next week is a little bit more dramatic. We face off with one of nature's giants. Okay good. Oh my heart rate. Okay I guess that's the end of this road. I think I was like 10 meters when I saw it. I was like, oh, that's a black thing. Ooh, that's a big black thing. We're not getting to that though. Nope. <laughs> a big thank you to my Patreons for all their support. A big thank you to all of those who have subscribed, like this video, and commenting every week. I enjoy your feedback and the community that we all bring together. And I'll see you for an exciting one next week. Bye.